we will talk about the Duke Blue Devils and whew, Mike Oko. Uh, I mean, voluntarily walking in to take over this gig. This bunch went 3-9 and nine last year under David Cutcliffe. Of course, Cutcliffe is now like an assistant to the commissioner uh, on football side or whatever for the SEC. <laughs> so uh, he, he got talked to by Texas about coming in. Uh, to maybe help run their offense a little bit, uh, maybe not as a coordinator, but as an analyst, whatever. He ends up with uh, the business side of the SEC. So their postgame win expectancy last year was supposed to be more of a four-win team as a three-win team, but regardless, their PPA margin was putrid. They were not great on offense, but they were even worse on defense last year. Uh, number 120 overall PPA margin, that's number 83 PPA per drive on offense, number 126 PPA per drive on defense, which means that there were only four teams in the entire country that were worse than them on a per-drive basis last year. Whew. Uh, returning production is number 115, which makes sense. I mean, you've got a coaching change, uh, especially coming off of a bad season, etc. This is the worst roster in the ACC, and it is not even close. I mean, not even close. Um I mean, at least the schedule. Like, they, they set up the schedule to where you could get a few wins here. I mean, my gosh. Just uh, just ridiculous. Uh, you start off with Temple at Northwestern, North Carolina, A&T. And then you play at Kansas. So, like, there's there's winnable games right off the bat. So, not not too shabby here. Let's talk about the offense, though. New OC Kevin Johns is from Memphis. Uh, did a pretty good job with the Tigers. Quarterbacks Riley Leonard and Jordan Moore are going to battle for the starting quarterback job because... Their quarterback, uh, Gunnar Holmberg, along with leading receiver Jake Bobo and the starting running back, Mateo Durant, are all gone. Uh, they are returning four offensive line starters, so that is certainly a good foundation to build on when you got the middle of your offense built. Uh, there are playmakers. Uh, you got Jalen Calhoun to work with, the wide receiver, but the roster, again, still a long ways off from being competitive in the ACC. The defense, uh, new D.C. is Rob Smith. He was Rutgers defensive coordinator. Of course, Mike Oko knows what he's doing. You've seen what he's done with Texas A&M. You saw what he did with Notre Dame before that. You saw what he did with Wake Forest before that. And I think that those Wake Forest ties are why he went to Duke. He understands how to win at a small private school in the Carolinas. Bottom line. Bottom line. So I, I think this is a good hire. I'm just curious why Elko took it. Yeah, either way, I think he was up for some other jobs, but... I mean, he is getting on up there in years, and he had not gotten the offer that he really wanted yet. So uh, we shall see. Regardless, uh, part of the reason Elko was hired was to fix this defense. Again, number 126 PPA per drive, number 108 success rate allowed overall, uh, number 126 in scoring opportunities allowed, and points per scoring opportunity allowed. I, that is crazy. They were number 126 as far as the amount of drives or the amount of uh, the percentage of drives that teams were able to get inside of your 40-yard line. Like, they could not stop anybody last year. Uh, they got solid pass rushers. That's good. Uh, defensive end, R.J. Oban. You got the defensive tackle, Carter. You got the linebacker, Hayward. But that's it. That's what you got. There's a lot of inexperience here. So maybe it's good that Elko can, like, mold these guys from the ground up. Maybe. They're projected favorites in two games. Uh, they got five toss-ups, which is actually more than what Georgia Tech had. Um, they are projected to be a double-digit underdog in nine games per SP+. So the expectations here are ground floor. Like this is, I'm not going to say year zero, but it's about as close to that as you can possibly get. Elko begins a long rebuilding process. If you see any sign of competitiveness, count that as a successful season. I will say that. I've got them at 2-10. and 10. I've got a win over Temple and a win over North Carolina A&T, but that does include losses at Northwestern and at Kansas. I, I think that those two programs are a little bit higher than what Duke is right now. Um, I'm really curious. Like, what is Kevin Johns going to do with this offense? What is the defense going to be able to do in year one with Elko and Rob Smith? This is a building year. The win total is three. I've got them with two wins. I mean, we'll see. Uh, their division odds are not great. <laughs> I mean, it's 150 to 1. To win the conference is 500 to 1. Uh, that ain't going to happen. That is that is not going to happen this year for sure. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.